Okay, YouTube, so I honestly believe that blogging and niche sites are one of the best ways that you can make a full-time income online right now. Between my two niche blogs, I'm making close to $20,000 per month just in ads and affiliates month after month after month pretty passively, right? And this does not include income from my blogging about blogging niche, right? My SEO course or my niche course or my email list or any of the products that I sell. This is $20,000 a month just from two niche blogs with Mediavine and Amazon and a couple of other affiliates, right? So I'm kind of living proof that starting a blog, starting a niche site is a really, really good way to make money online right now. But the bad news is so many blogs, the vast majority of blogs out there end up making no money at all. Now, did you ever stop to think why that is? Why do so many blogs and so many niche sites fail? And so in this video, I'm gonna lay out the top five blogging mistakes to avoid if you wanna make a full-time income blogging. All right, so when I was doing some research for this video, checking out what some of the other bloggers were saying on YouTube for the biggest mistakes to avoid when blogging. And a lot of these videos honestly were just filled with terrible advice. Like, don't forget to get web hosting. By the way, here's my Bluehost link and I get $100 to sign up, right? That's like an actual tip that someone gives. It's just really, really bad advice, right? And those are just shameless attempts to make money with Bluehost and other affiliates disguised as actually giving you actionable help and tips, and the point is you won't see any links, affiliate or Bluehost links in this video whatsoever. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, so the number one mistake to avoid is picking the wrong niche, right? So probably the biggest mistake in all of blogging that I see is people just pick a terrible, terrible niche. So what is a bad niche? I mean, put simply, it's a niche where you can't get any traffic and you can't make any money. And usually this happens because most of the blogging gurus out there will tell you that you can only blog about your passions, right? What are your passions? Brainstorm your passions. Think about your passions and blog about that. And the problem with this is that it leads people to start a blog about the most random, obscure topic that you can possibly think of. Like how I overcame anxiety while I was living in Switzerland when I was 25, right? Or something totally random like that. And the problem is, People think about these things that they went through in their life and they start to treat their blog like a journal, right? Where they're documenting what happened and what they went through and now how they overcame it and so on and so forth. And the reason this is a problem is because nobody cares about your story or what you went through or what you're experienced or some hardships that you overcame. They only care about how that may relate to them, right? Their problems their questions, what they're going through. So unless you can somehow tie that back into a real monetizable problem that they're having, then no one really cares about what happened to you five years ago, right? So think about it, it sounds obvious, but if nobody cares, then how are you gonna get people to your blog? How are you gonna make any money? And look, let me be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with starting a blog or a niche site about something that you're passionate about, right? In fact, it's, it's preferred, right? Because it makes it easier to write and come up with topic ideas and so on and so forth, but only to the extent that other people are also interested in that topic. For example, I like to talk about gardening. I think it's like the greatest niche for a blog or a niche site, right? And if you are a gardener and you're passionate about gardening, then you're in luck because that's an amazing niche. And the reason for that is not because you are passionate about gardening. It's because tons of other people are also passionate about gardening, right? Think about gardeners, right? That they have tons of questions that they have asked. They have tons of problems, right? On starting their garden or maintaining their garden or growing this plant or growing that flower, right? Tons of questions to ask tons of problems that they have, which means that you can create content around all of these topics, around all of these questions. Not only that, gardening has tons of products that people buy, right? Gardening shoes, gardening hose, a gardening shovel, whatever. I'm not a gardener, so I don't really know, but I know that there's tons of products in the gardening space. And when, what that means for us as a blogger or a niche site owner is that we can create content around those types of products or recommend those types of products, which can easily lead to a lot of affiliate sales. 
and because other people are also interested in gardening, that means that there's a market for your niche. And when you have a market, that means you have a chance to actually make money. I know it sounds really obvious, but you would be surprised at how so many people spend so much time and so much effort getting their blog going and pumping out all of this content when it's dead in the water before they even started all because they didn't have the right niche. So please, before you go all in with your blog, make sure that your niche actually has other people who are interested in it, not just you. All right, so blogging mistake to avoid number two, wasting time on things that don't matter, right? So when people finally have their niche selected, this is where they get into trouble. For example, they'll spend weeks deciding which host they should use, right? So outside of the really crappy host, which you should definitely not use, and you can research that separately, you know, all these mid tier or even high tier hosts are generally all the same. They're all generally really good. So pick out a good host and then move on. And then another thing that they'll waste a lot of time on is coming up with a tagline, right? Apparently this is something that certain blogging gurus actually teach in courses that you need to have this tagline. It needs to be catchy. It needs to be witty. It needs to draw your reader in. You should spend all this time thinking about your tagline, right? There's bloggers going into Facebook groups, polling random people who aren't even their target audience saying, what do you think of my tagline? What do you think about this tagline? You're spending weeks and weeks on this tagline, right? Nobody cares what your tagline is. Nobody notices what your tagline is. I didn't even know that a tagline was really even a thing until I saw it popping up in all these Facebook groups, right? Taglines don't make you money. So don't waste your time or pressure yourself or get stressed out about taglines. And then once they're finally done with their tagline, then there's something else to worry about, right? And that's the logo, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe it's important to have a professionally looking website. I think your website should look good. It's a reflection on how much you care or how seriously take your site. So I do think it's important, but not when you're just starting out or not when you're not getting any traffic or making any money, right? So bloggers who don't make money or who are just starting are spending all this time stressing about their logo design. Again, they're going to Facebook and asking people what they think about their logo. Just get a text logo up on your site, maybe with a little illustration as soon as possible. It doesn't have to look great. And later on, when you're actually making money, you can go back and optimize that logo later, right? So stop stressing out over these little things that don't move the needle for your blog. They're not gonna make you any money and start worrying about creating content and getting people to actually read that content. All right, so blogging mistake number three is not researching topics before writing about them. And how this usually works is that a blogger will get some random idea just pop into their head and they think it'll make a great idea for a post. And so they'll sit down, they'll run over to WordPress and they'll spend two to three hours pumping out this post. Now the problem is they haven't bothered to do any research to determine whether this is a topic that their audience is actually interested in reading about. So in the SEO world, we call this keyword research, but in plain English, it's just doing the work up front to make sure that the content we're putting out on our blog actually has a demand, right? Which just means people want to read about these topics. For example, on my personal finance site, Credit Takeoff, when I was doing my keyword research, I noticed that there was a certain credit card that a lot of people were Googling about in my niche, and that's called the Legacy Visa credit card. And so because I did the research, I went out and wrote a post about this topic, published it, and waited a couple of weeks. And now that post is ranking number one for its main keyword in Google. And it brings my website thousands of free visitors every single month passively, all because I took the time to research the questions, problems, and topics that people in my niche want to read about. So do me a favor, stop writing about random topics that just pop into your head and take the time up front to do a little keyword research so you can be reasonably sure that you're creating content around topics that your audience wants to read. All right, so blogging mistake number four to avoid is writing mediocre content. When you're a blogger, right, if you think about it, your content is the most important thing that you have going for it. It's how you get an audience, it's how you get people to click your affiliate links, it's how you get people to sign up your email list, it's how you rank 
in Google, okay? Content as a blogger and content creator is really everything. But I see so many bloggers out there making the mistake of writing this thin, unhelpful content that will never rank in Google. So part of this is that they're kind of in a rush, right? To get out a lot of content, which is important, but we never wanna sacrifice quality for quantity. And the other part of it, honestly, is that they just don't know any better, right? They've never been taught really how to create useful content that's not only good for their readers, but it's also good for Google. And so when we talk about really good content, we're talking about content that matches a user's intent or you know content that's formatted properly so it has lots of bullet points in headers in tables and you know so it's really easy to read we're talking about content that's comprehensive and, and it covers a topic fully in depth or, or content that answers specific questions or solves a specific problem so just remember as a blogger content really is king we don't want to be taking any shortcuts with the quality of our content, because once you really learn how to consistently produce a high level of good content, you're almost assured to have a somewhat successful blog on your hands. All right, so blogging mistake number five to avoid is not producing enough content. Look, I know I just got finished saying that you should never sacrifice the quality of your content for the quantity of your content, and that absolutely is true. But what's also true is that you need both. You need quality content, but you also need a lot of it. All right, so just think about it this way. This is an obvious example, but it, it illustrates the importance of having a lot of content. So think about two blogs in the same niche with the same quality content, the same authoritativeness, everything else is the same. But the first blog only has 10 total posts on it, right? They're really good, high quality posts, but they only have 10. The entire blog only has 10 posts. Now think about the second blog. It has 100 total posts. Same quality as the first site, but 10 times as many content. Everything else is the same except the volume of content, right? Site number two has 10 times as many posts. So which one do you think would have the better chance of getting more traffic and making more money, right? Of course, it's the second site because it has more content, right? So when we can produce a volume of content and, and for a niche site or a niche blog, I would say at least 50 pieces of content. If you, Once you can get over 100, again, you're almost guaranteed to be making some kind of income as long as you know what you're doing, right? Your keyword research is on point and your content game is on point. And that's because with a hundred posts on your site, that gives you a hundred chances to rank in Google and, and get traffic from Google, right? It gives you a hundred chances or maybe even more with Pinterest to have a pin go viral. And so we wanna stack those odds in our favor, right? Go even further. If you had an amazing gardening site with 500 amazing pieces of content, like how would you not make a couple of thousand dollars Per month, right? You would almost have to try not to in that scenario. And that's just because you're giving yourself more chances. Every single high quality piece of content that you can publish on your site is an income opportunity. Just think about it that way. Now, let me be clear. I'm not telling you to go out and publish a hundred pieces of crappy content. Again, quality comes first, but a certain volume of content will really move the needle in terms of your traffic and your income. Okay, so just to recap the five biggest blogging mistakes that I see today, and again, none of these tips involve having you to go and sign up for Bluehost. Mistake number one, picking the wrong niche. If you pick a niche where there's not enough people interested in the topic, you're gonna have an almost impossible time making any money at all. Mistake number two is wasting time on all of these little things that don't matter, okay? Who's the best web host? What is my tagline? What should the tagline be? What kind of logo can I get on my site, right? These little things can wait until the end, until you're actually getting traffic, until you're actually getting income, right? You can always upgrade your host. You can always change your tagline and you can always get a better logo. Mistake number three is not researching the topics before you start writing, right? The last thing you wanna do is spend two hours working really hard on a blog post just because you had a thought bubble 
pop into your head that that was a good idea to write about that when nobody in your niche is actually interested in reading about it. So remember, do proper keyword research to make sure that the content you're writing aligns with the interests of your audience. And mistake number four was writing mediocre content. If you're gonna take the time and put in the effort to have a blog and to create content, then make sure you're also taking the time to create really good content. At the end of the day, as a content creator, whether you're a blogger, whether you're a YouTuber, content is king. So take the time to create content that your audience will find valuable and that Google will find valuable too. And mistake number five is not having enough content. All right, so start to think of your blog like a mini Wikipedia for your niche, where you wanna cover every topic, every subtopic, every question, every problem, every product, in its entirety, right? Attack your niche from all angles to where you have a volume, an encyclopedic volume of content on your site. All right, so if this video helped shine a little light on the top five blogging mistakes to avoid, then do me a favor and hit that like button and leave me a comment below. Thanks guys.